Hi, uh, this is Crowdfunding 101, what you need to know. Uh, I work for a company called Greenlit, which is a crowdfunding company um, that's designed by and for creatives. Uh, so uh, I work with different projects every day. The thing that makes us a little different is that we are really hands-on throughout the crowdfunding process. We talk to everyone and help strategize for their campaigns. Um, every single project we've had a meeting with, basically. So that's what makes us a little different and also uh, what makes me... I guess an expert on crowdfunding, if you will, um, because yeah, I help campaigns every day reach their uh, funds. We've been, uh, this is our second year that we've been partnered with Vault. Um, we also did some partnership, a partnership with Edinburgh Fringe uh, this year. Um, and I'm, uh, what was I about to say? And I'm a theater maker myself. Again, there's a slide for that. Uh, but yeah, so we've had a lot of success in our kind of theater activity. And I think crowdfunding is a really great option that I, I think we've seen used mostly for film, but it's, it's really important for theater makers to uh, dip our toes in there as well. So uh, I'll just go ahead and get started. Um, again, I already mentioned a little bit about greenlit.com, um, but we are a British-based crowdfunder. Uh, we're fairly new to the game. Uh, we started in April 2019, but again, our special focus is we only deal with creative projects. Uh, our kind of our thought is that we deal with audiences, not buyers, because a lot of the other crowdfunding platforms out there, you know, most of their money comes from gadgets or products, essentially. Um, and that's not what we're doing at Greenlit. We're, you know, having kind of connecting creatives with their audience uh, before you know the projects even uh, in production. Um, you can find us at Greenlit Fund uh, across social media and then you can also just find us at greenlit.com. Um, me, I am my name is Grace O'Keefe. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I work at Greenlit, and then I'm also a theater maker myself. I actually have a show that I'm taking to vaults, so uh, I am in the same position as all of you in a way. And then, sorry, we've got some more people entering the room. Um, yeah, so I know where you're all coming from. I've done, uh, you know, these budgets and have had to fundraise for uh, festivals myself. Um, and you can email me at any time. My email will be at the end of the presentation as well. And I'm sure I'll get it, Adele will get it sent out to you um, after attending. But my email is grace at greenlit.com. Easy to remember, um, very simple. And yeah, I think we will now just get started. So we'll start with a very uh, fancy quote uh, that I found while uh, while doing some research for Stage Directors UK on you know the future of funding models um, and the resilience of the theater industries in particular. And so one of the things we found in our research was that uh, we've been moving towards this collaborative economy, if you will, for the past ten years. So Kickstarter, I think, started around 2010, um, and we've seen a lot of growth in crowdfunding and similar things. Uh, since then, whether that's like buy me a coffee or, you know, Indiegogo, Kickstarter, uh, crowdfunder.uk, uh, what have you. Um, the, the thing that I think is really beautiful about these, uh, this new economy that's being developed is that it really makes the relationship between the creative and the audience member a lot closer than it would be, you know, if someone gives you a ton of money to make a project amazing i mean no one's gonna turn up their nose at that but you don't have the audience built in from the beginning and i think we've seen more and more that people are wanting to have that close relationship with whoever you know the content they're consuming the content creators whether that's on social media with influencers or with uh with creatives in general um so I think it's a really great way to kind of establish those bonds and create fans um, who are excited to follow your work. So the, one of the key things that we'll be addressing, I think literally in the next slide, that there's a lot more benefits to crowdfunding than just, you know, the funding aspect. Yeah, exactly. So why crowdfund? Uh, I think, you know, a really great reason is to find, engage, and solidify your audience. It is all about that crowd. Um, you know, I think it's really valuable to have people on board from the inception of a project, um, whether that's future audience members, uh, 
whether that is, you know, someone who might follow your career afterwards and see what else you do. It's a really great way to, again, get that collaborative economy, make that connection and get these people on your side. Um, the other great thing is you get funding on your own terms. Uh, you know, it's amazing to have different funding pots. We'll never, you know, disparage them, especially as an American. It's amazing to see how much, you know, even public funding there is, it's not perfect here, but you know, it exists, incredible. Um, who would have thunk? Uh, it's amazing to have those, but I think as artists, we can sometimes like twist our art or, to you know what we think oh this funding body might like or this uh theater or this you know producer might want um the great thing about crowdfunding is if you're able to convince enough people that your idea you know should exist is has merit you can get the money for your project you don't have to twist it you just have to sell it conv convincingly um, and then, you know, selling that that act of pitching your project, of selling yourself, selling your project convincingly, I think is really important for us artists to do because I think, and I think this is even more so the case in our theater training versus when I deal with filmmakers, but there's not too much on the entrepreneurial side in theater training, in my experience at the very least. Um, and I think, you know, we all have to do it. Unfortunately, it would be great if we could just be artists and have our brilliant little weird ideas. Um, and someone would just come along and give us the money to make those ideas. And that would be beautiful and utopic, but unfortunately it's not the way that, that the, this world works. And it's unlikely to become that in the future as well. Um, so you need to have these skills of pitching yourself because you know whether you're pitching to your grandmom's friend, you know, this project and hoping she'll give 20 pounds or you're, you know, you're talking to a theater programmer or you're talking to a producer who might have a bigger pot of money. You, you know, this, this skill of putting yourself out there, of pitching yourself, of pitching your ideas, it, it really is the most valuable thing at all, I th of all in our industry. Um, and it also helps solidify your network. It helps you, it, it, you know, it forces you to put yourself out there, which I think we can be as theater makers a little reticent to do sometimes. So now we're gonna go through some common myths about crowdfunding. Um, the first and probably the one that comes to me most often is that not everyone can crowdfund. You need a large, rich network to crowdfund. You have to be basically Zach Braff. Um, I was just using that example earlier, but um, the, the beauty is you actually really, you know, I'm not saying it doesn't help. If you are come from a ton of money, it's going to be easier to crowdfund. Uh, if you know a ton of rich people, yeah, it might be easier to crowdfund. If you've got a hundred thousand followers on social media, yeah, it will be easier to crowdfund. It'll be easier to do a lot of things if you have those in place. Um, but that doesn't mean that you need that to be successful while crowdfunding. I've seen projects with, you know, less than 500 followers across social media, not from a rich, well-connected background or anything like that, you know, raise 15K. Um, and I've seen that several times happen. What the key thing there is that they were, you know, they put themselves out there. They had, they, they hustled. Uh, they, you know, they talked to a ton of people. They pitched it a ton and they were able to get their project. So, you know, it is easier if you have all of these things handed to you, but that doesn't mean that it's impossible to do it if you don't have these things handed to you. And I think, you know, those who've put that graft in often, you know, they end up with, many many other benefits um another another really i think damaging misconception is that you need to go viral to succeed or that kind of money will just somehow randomly trickle in um that unfortunately doesn't happen i have had people think that like oh well i put it out there no money's come in why is that and it's because yeah you need to you need to put in the work you need to talk to people you need to put yourself out there um it, yeah there's no it's not an easy again it's not spoiler alert it's not the easy way to get funding um but things like going viral i mean just in general are very rarely happening nowadays compared to 10 years ago uh and even you know if it, that's not the issue it's just it's it's basically impossible to manufacture going viral or having your project like pop up what you can do is have one-on-one -on -one interactions that ideally lead to other one-on-one -on -one interactions so think of it more as like a, a five degrees of separation thread then uh you know something just automatically accumulating like swatches and views and you end up with a ton of money um because again crowdfunding not the easy way to get funding surprisingly um my 
boss likes to compare crowdfunding to to you know other more traditional funds uh models of funding as taking a walk versus walking to a destination versus taking the bus um obviously you're going to get more steps in it's going to be more effort uh but along the way you you know you learn the journey ha, get some exercise in. you might meet people along the way you might discover things um so there's a lot of benefits you know even though it's harder that doesn't necessarily mean that it's less good or not better um, and then finally, because it isn't all about getting money, um, I think having a crowd behind you, having people who are literally and figuratively invested in your project are probably the most invaluable thing. Um, and I always say people to people to focus on the number of backers, if not more so than the money, because if you do, if you focus on the number of backers and just getting that word out there, the money will come. I know that's hard. You know, you if you're trying to raise 15k, you'll probably will need a thousand someone who donates a thousand. Um, but on, on the level, you know, as someone who is making a vault show, we probably don't need 15k. Um, I don't know your show. I don't <laughs> mean to presume, but you know, for a few thousand pounds, you know, it, it definitely can be done. Um, you know, if you just focus on getting that word out there. So then we've got the elements of success. Um, to uh, People always ask me what makes a successful crowdfunding campaign. Um, and so these are kind of the three areas that make, you know, make a campaign. The first is the team. Um, just like quite simply, the more people you have on a crowdfunding campaign who are actively sending out messages um, and talking to people, the more money you can bring in just by a matter of, you know, it's math, it's their network. Um, if, you know, each person is 100 people, then there you go. Two people will have 200 or, you know, three people, 300 and so on and so forth. Um, the other nice thing about having a team, though, is just because crowdfunding, again, it's not easy. Um, it's nice to have some someone to bounce off of, someone to share the workload with. Um, I do recommend trying to at least have two people involved in a campaign just so you can kind of the burden is shared. Um, I will say like if you are thinking like, oh, there's eight people in our between our cast and our creative team, all of them are sending out messages. There are some teams that are like that and that's great, but also don't like expect people to do that. Um, don't count, you know, your chickens before they hatch in terms of that. Uh, so I think that's something to keep in mind because sometimes I've seen teams of eight people who, you know, only the one person who is the lead has been sending out the messages and then he or they are like upset about it because they feel like they're shouldering all of the work, which is fair, but at the same time, I don't know, you know, uh, you have to really establish the 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 bounds of like what you're expecting everyone to do in a crowdfunding campaign and you always want to have again this is a little spoiler alert a positive attitude and be grateful for what people are doing um the, you know the meat and potatoes of any crowdfunding campaign will be you know the content that's what you share on social media that's the crowdfunding page the main thing there i think is just making sure it fits uh your project and you know it's not there's not people have asked me like oh can i like is it too black and white um will that not be catchy enough i don't think stuff like that really matters as long as it's not unattractive or unappealing and be the thing i think you should be thinking about in terms of content are to be representing you know representing your show um representing what you're trying to make and give people a little taste of that in everything that you do and then uh finally the approach so this is to i'm speaking of both two backers and also to your team you always want to have a positive approach um you never want to come from a place of a need or like begging because that's not attractive you don't want to go to a potential backer and say i need this money or else like i don't know what i'll do and this project will be a failure without you because no one wants to be part of a failure um similarly you don't want to approach them however and like act entitled to their money because no one's you know you're not entitled to anything um but what you want to come to them with the approach of this is something exciting, you can be a part of this something that is exciting. Um, and, you know, that's also, I think, how you want to address your team is to just the more positive vibes around a crowdfunding campaign, the more likely you are to succeed. 
So in terms of actually like the process of making money during a crowdfunding campaign, the the king, the number one thing you're going to be ha- like, that's unavoidable in a crowdfunding campaign, I, I think, is direct messaging, known contacts. This will make up the bulk of your uh, campaign p- at this, pretty much at this level, That that's pretty much a guarantee. And actually, even unless you're selling like a, a cool gadget, that's probably the majority of most crowdfunding uh campaigns uh green was actually started after there was a re- uh some a piece of research came out that like 95 percent of donations on kickstarter i think it was or maybe Indigo, one of them um where it came from a direct link to the project um you know it's i'm not saying that people never like are just scrolling through randomly and clicking on projects it does happen like and you know sometimes when it happens it's big amounts but you can't really I just expect, oh, some rich billionaire is going to stumble across my project and give me a ton of money. Um, a, because that's rare, but also B, because you've got no control over ha- that happening. Um, what you do have control over is getting the word out to your network, getting your network to spread the word. And, you know, just that that's the only thing you really can have an effect on. Um, the other things, which I, I don't say I'm not devaluing it, but social media is important. Like I, I'd say in when I've ran a campaign, there have definitely been times when I've just posted something on social media and people have given. Uh, it doesn't happen all that often, but it does. Uh, you know, it's a fair amount of uh, donations, but those have always been people that I already knew. Um, it's again, it's rare that someone sees a post on social media and thinks oh i must i must donate um it normally takes you reaching out to someone and saying hey this is like my project this is my play this is you know my show it's really important to me uh that this because of this this and this i think you would enjoy this because this this and this um it it takes you personally pitching often to make that actual donation happen um but you know sometimes you do you know get a hit from someone that you haven't spoken to her in years because they saw it on social media and that that's pretty exciting and then the final way which is the least likely to like lead to a donation but can be helpful in other ways is a cold ask which is basically when you reach out to someone who you've never spoken to before with cold asks i don't really recommend not approaching in the same way that you would do a known contact with a known contact i would be pretty clear that what I want you to do is back my campaign. I would really appreciate it if you would consider backing my project with a known ass because you're being a little, I feel like, you know, if you've never talked to someone before, it's a little cheeky to come right in asking for money. So I would say, I'd love it if you check out the page and maybe share if there's someone with a network or if you would give me advice on this, this, and this, or give me, you know, if rehearsal space, something, you know, uh, have an ask that's not money I think for a cold ask and then you know it sometimes they'll end up giving money anyway uh so I yeah that's my recommendation with cold asks again in terms of like where you're going to put your effort in it should always be directed towards direct messaging known contacts first and foremost okay so then, then we get into my ancient greek section uh oh also, by the way, does anyone have any questions? Um, I've just been monologuing. My throat is acutely aware that I've just been monologuing for the past, and I can't see the time, uh, 20 minutes. So please feel free to raise your hand, put something in the chat. I used to be like a real teacher, so I'm used to dealing with it. Um, and I will pause at any, I will also have a section at the end where you can ask any questions. Great. So we get to the Aristotle's rhetoric because I am a nerd. Um, so Aristotle and his rhetoric laid out kind of the three elements to a persuasive argument. And I think they're actually a really helpful way to kind of visualize what you want to include in a pitch. Um, the three things are on well, ancient Greek are facts or logos, uh, pathos or emotion, and then ethos or authority. So you want three things, these three things to work together to make a okay, you know, an interesting pitch. Um, For instance, if I came in and I told you, you know, about the the play I'm bringing to Bolt, and I just said, oh, this is really an emotional story for me because it has like this, uh, I experienced it personally and a lot of like I told you, you know, my life story that why I wrote it. Um, That has a lot of emotion. 
but imagine I'm telling you this and I'm kind of all over the place. Um, you can tell I feel deeply about it, but it's not very organized. And I, I've never made a play before or I've never done any sort of theater before. You're, so you've got all the emotion, but you don't necessarily have the facts in order or the authority to, you know, to prove to my audience, the receiving person, that I have, you know, the, the, the ability uh, to deliver this piece that I'm telling you about. Um, similarly, if you just tell me the facts of the play, like it's about this thing and this thing and this thing, and it stars this person, or not this stars this person, and these are the characters and here's a plot. I often, like a lot of times when I ask people to pitch me something, they just give me a plot synopsis. And those two things, I'd say I have like a sentence of plot in any pitch, because um, that's actually not what matters. I'd say most of the time it's the, it's the tone, it's the mood, it's how people are going to feel uh, about a project. Now, again, if maybe if I mentioned the cast and there are some, you know, well-known person, that's a little bit of authority there. Um, you know, something like listing like this got five stars. That's a way to show authority. You know, someone besides me thinks this is good. Um, so there are different ways to show, you know, these things, but that's something you should keep in mind for all of your pitches, that emotional side, you know, if my facts, if it makes sense, if I'm telling a clear story, if I'm telling a clear narrative, and then, you know, how am I proving that I can deliver what I'm promising? And then I think the next one is my show that I am bringing to vaults, actually, um, that I previously ran a crowdfunding campaign for our Edinburgh Fringe run. So I haven't updated the page since then. And of course it's taking forever to load. Uh, I already have it open somewhere. So, oh, oh, smooth, smooth. And sorry if my internet is being uh, laggy. I hope there has been any issue. It's been going out all day, which is a fun thing to happen when you're giving a panel. Great, so this is actually my example of what not, this little blurb I wrote. I don't think is a really good example of a pitch. Um, it's too focused, I would say, on that logos of the facts. So a surreal dark comedy, sure, we're getting genre. Trials and tribulations, a 20-something teacher faces in a six-form college. That's plot, kind of facts. One woman show inspired by real life experiences. We've got a little bit of authority there. Um, later on, like when I was actually, you know, tweeting people about the show during Fringe. I, I changed that to this sh hilarious, this show was written by real hilarious teachers because that's a bit more specific on how it was uh, inspired by real life experiences. Specificity, always a good thing. Um, and then we've got, you know, the, the issues that the play is about. Um, and that's something I think we actually really struggled with with our pitch video when we first were uh, so a pitch video is normally like a two to three minute video at the top of your crowdfunding page explaining why people should donate to the project. Um, when you're, you know, when you're creating a crowdfunding page, so, you know, I've, I've hypothetically pitched you here, I'll pitch you in the words, even in the images, you know, we've got some, we've got authority here showing reviews. Um, we've got an aesthetic that, you know, it's obviously it's a play about teachers, so we've got the aesthetic right there. Um, and throughout, and you can tell, oh, we're funny because we've got a pair of underwear that says bad teachers that did, you know, sold, sell pretty well. So, um, but in the pitch video itself, when we first were brainstorming for this, we like, again, so it's, it's a one woman comedy. It's quite broad. A, a dick breaks in the first 10 minutes. <laughs> but we first, when we were like writing, like what we were going to say in this, hopefully I'm allowed to say dick on, I'll figure it out. <laughs> we were putting down things like, oh, it's about like mental health and like the terrible state of the English school system. And we had a whole page of these notes that were very, very sad. Um, and you know, that that is part of the play. There is depth to it, but we went halfway through there and I just went, wait a second, this is like wah wah. This isn't accurately reflecting the play. Um, so I will hopefully be showing you what we ended up doing for the pitch video and hopefully does this share sound as well. Sorry, bear with me a second before I make sure. Hopefully it works, all right. The anticipation. Teacher, bad teacher, teacher, bad teacher, bad teacher, bad teacher. Parkour. I wear one of these. No. <laughs> Aaron, can you try doing it once, just normally? Great. This is this not normal. No. Will you try then? All right. 
Hi, my name is Grace O'Keefe. This is Erin Holland. We are the Queens of Cups. And this August, we're taking our show, Bad Teacher, to Underbelly for Edinburgh Fringe. We're going to be boring about it. And yeah, do it like that. <laughs> teacher that's close to mental breakdown? Is the patriarchy getting you down? Is your country run by a floppy-haired halfwit who hates the R? Then we have the remedy for you. My teacher, my teacher, my teacher, my teacher, my... It's got dick-breaking, hardcore drum and bass, and the best Marlon Brando impression this critic has ever seen. We've got an amazing venue, a hilarious script, and an incredible team, a.k.a. us here. But we still need one more thing. Money, please. Please, sir, I want some money. Help me, I'm poor! We're being as thrifty as possible. But Edinburgh Fringe is expensive. We need to pay for all of these things and more. That's why we're crowdfunding. Let me make you an offer that you can't refuse. Become a part of Bad Teacher's journey. We think this show has serious legs, and our venue, Underbelly, is where Fleabag and Six started their meteoric rise to success. And if you support us today, you can get one of these fabulous rewards. VIP access. Special thanks in our program and on social media. And a free ticket with your donation. And of course, our fabulous merch. You know what? If you can't donate because, you know, cost of living crisis and all that jazz, we get it. You should come to one of our London preview shows. Or if not that, come up to Edinburgh itself and come and see us at Fringe. Or if you can't do that, you can see Evie's hilarious virtual lesson coming this July. You heard it here first, guys. That would be hilarious. You won't be disappointed. Just look at our fabulous reviews. Wow. They're pretty awesome. <laughs> so, please, check out the Bad Teacher page and consider donating today. And once you finish donating, please tell all of your pals, because, let's be honest, who would want a piece of this? <laughs> <laughs> well good thing it said dick there so i guess it doesn't matter if i <laughs> was not supposed to say dick in person earlier uh but so basically yeah you see that's quite different uh than the original kind of like sad pitch that we came up with and it's much more appropriate to you know the show that we are actually creating um and you know that your pitch video does not need to be as intensive as that this was also we used it for like trailer footage um or you know to pitch the show in general for a month-long run versus i know a lot of the vault slots are you know a week or less uh but that gives you an idea of you want to reflect the tone of your piece when you're pitching it when you're I um, mean, that can be through just like the language you use. It can be through the, um, if you use emojis or not. Um, actually, you know, the pages don't support emojis. I take that back. Um, but, you know, when you're direct messaging people, uh, you want to keep in mind like what you are trying to convey about the piece in every single piece of content that you do. Great, nice thing. Can we go to the next page? Yeah, so uh, please feel free to contact us if you're interested in crowdfunding. Again, every single project that's on Greenland gets a one-on-one -on -one meeting with us. And then we're, you know, we're here throughout the process to help, uh, you know, strategize your campaign. Um, we'll probably have some special, uh, you know, things with vaults, like a vaults newsletter um, and try to do things around the festival as well. You can email me about that directly at grace at greenlit.com. Um, and then we're also on socials at Greenlit Fund. You can also find me on social media at Grace O'Keefe is my last name. And then do I have a slide for questions? No, but are there any questions? Oh, I'm ready to. <laughs> Do my own one woman show after talking for that long. <laughs> Any, I'll wait another minute or so.
Um, again, this recording will be available on the Vault's resources. Um, I'll have Adele send that out, I think, afterwards. Um, and if we don't have any other questions, um, the other only other thing I want to cover is um, we are actually having and uh, a night. Uh, I can't speak. Uh, a panel next week on uh, theater programming. Um, we'll have someone from the vaults there, Adele, um, as well as uh, some people from the Pleasance and Theater 503. Obviously, uh, you know, we've all already been programmed at vaults, which is amazing, but um, we'll be talking to programmers um, at these various theaters um, and festivals about what they look for when they are, oh, there is one, someone in the chat. When they are, uh, when they, oh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I'm very bad at multitasking. When they're programming their seasons. So I, uh, Maya, I see your question. I'm gonna just pop the link to that in the chat. And then there's also, um, if you are interested in attending, if you use the code crowd for 50% off um, tickets, it's right in central London near Charing Cross. Um, and then, all right, Maya, thank you for asking your question. Uh, what's the best way to reach out to someone you haven't talked to in a while and point them in the direction of your crowdfunder? Now, the, probably the, the best thing to do here is if you can during this phase, pre, you know, starting your crowdfunding campaign is slide into their DMs, send them a message, uh, like their photos, uh, you know, start buttering people up essentially. Um, However, you know, if you had, if you haven't done that and, or you're, you know, you're going through the list of people and you're going to say, oh, I haven't talked to them in a year or so, you know, start a conversation, um, you know, that or in your initial ask, uh, make sure it's personalized so that you've got something there uh, that people can directly, uh, you know, be like, oh, this wasn't like a masked copy and pasted message. Uh, you know, this is something that they thought about me. They referenced the last time we saw each other. Uh, they referenced, you know, something that's specific to me. Great. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you all so much for coming. Um, oh, thank you, Claire. I'm glad that that was helpful. Again, feel nice to get the, the thank you Kiara um I hope I'm pronouncing that right um but yes it was lovely to talk to you all again feel free to shoot me an email at grace at greenlit.com um but otherwise have a really lovely night thanks everybody all right well I will yes see you all later and at the festival good luck with the launch tomorrow <laughs>